What's up YouTube? We're back in this thing. Today we got this kaleidoscope effect that uh, I've seen a lot of people do in like concert photography and stuff. Most of the time they're probably doing it with an actual kaleidoscope filter that screws onto the lens. But I thought what's a cool photo effect that we can do that doesn't require overlays or any like third party plugin, just something that basically everyone can do that has Photoshop. That's kind of what I came up with here. So this is definitely gonna be more of a quick tutorial, something really cool that you can use to up your Instagram game a little bit. So if you're new to the channel or haven't clicked subscribed yet, go ahead and do that because we got a thing called tutorial miss going on here. It's where I upload 31 videos in 31 days of December. So one tutorial every day, all of December. So there's bound to be at least one video that you're gonna like. I'm gonna have the link to the playlist down below so if this is your first video or you just want to catch up with all the other videos the other 11 videos we've done before this go ahead and go learn some effects but that's enough talking for now let's get into the video and uh show you how to do this kaleidoscope effect all right so we're here in photoshop and the first thing i'm gonna do here is just go to the lasso tool and just do a rough mark around of your subject i would give it a little bit of room that way you can like have the feather and you'll see in a second why it's kind of important. And then once you're done there, click select and mask. And what it's gonna do here is just bring out and show you what the mask would look like. So to get this effect, you just bring up the feather a lot. I would say like right about to like where you start seeing it go transparent on your subject. You can play with shift edge a little bit if you need. Uh, for this right here though, I'm gonna keep it at zero. I like the way that looks. And then you can click control J on your keyboard. And what that's gonna do is duplicate the layer and you can see what you've made now i'm going to rename this layer and layer and name it just keep and then duplicate that just so we have like a um like a fall safe back if we like mess up an effect or whatever we can always have that and not have to like restart the whole effect now that we just duplicated that layer and then i renamed it so it doesn't get confusing and then what i'm going to do is actually duplicate that layer again and keep one as the main and what that's going to mean is every layer is going to go either behind it yeah every layer is going to go behind it so if you can see here i'm going to keep it at behind right now but I will drag one up here and then you can do something like that and drag it later. For right now, I'm just gonna go to the eraser tool and make sure you're selected on like some soft, soft round brush. That's what I use. And then you can play around with the opacity. I think something around 50 looks good. What I'm gonna do is make sure you're selected on the top layer or the layer in the top left and kind of just make, make the edges a little bit more soft and erase some of this stuff that maybe you don't want up here and that's looking pretty good to me what you can do is drag the main on top and then also like what i was saying with the main you can go ahead and erase around the edges a little bit but you do want a little bit of that like you don't want to go like completely to the subject if that makes sense you want to like a little bit of that background and i think something like that looks pretty good and then we can go to uh one copy or we'll just name it top left so it doesn't get too confusing and then go to channels and this is where the effects gonna really sell go ahead and click on green and then click Control shift a and what that's gonna do is bring up the raw camera raw editor and then you can find you can go ahead and find optics depending on what version you have it's wherever the like lens distortion option is so sometimes it's up here you just have to find it but basically distortion and then drag that to something like one or two you can go as as crazy as you want but you'll see in a second what it does and then do the same thing for blue but instead of doing negative one this time we're going to do something like negative two or negative three and then make sure you're selected back on the rgb and if so you can see here it has that distortion or whatever and then what we're going to do is just go back to keep duplicate the keep and then drag it to the top so we're, we're dragging that one around and then maybe drag it to somewhere in the top right something like that looks good to me and then again dragging main on top so we can kind of see what's going on there. I'm gonna make main invisible right now and make sure I'm selected on keep copy or top right and then go through and just soften the edges. I think something like that looks good and then go to main and then I'm gonna just erase where I think it should be erased at. So I like that again, maybe for top right a little bit of this off, maybe right there just a tad but I'm liking how that looks. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to green control shift A and do the same distortion thing, negative one. And as you can see, we're already getting that kaleidoscope kind of effect. You can uh, play around with how you want it to be. I'm gonna move just a little bit. I think to sell the effect, you don't want them like in like the four corners. You kind of want them a little off center. You can even do a little bit of rotation if you want. I think we're gonna keep it default just cause I like how that looks. Going back to our keep copy, name this bottom right and then make sure i drag that above the main so when i go to move it it doesn't move the main and you also have to make sure it's visible 
and then drag it to the bottom right and then find something where you like it. Going back to the eraser tool and then drag in main on top. And then you can you can actually erase into the uh, the actual main too. I think that looks kind of cool. It all depends on what kind of look you're going for though, but I like the way that looks. Make sure you select it on bottom right and then go to green and control shift A. Basically, you're doing the same thing over and over again. In this effect, I'm going to show you a few things that you can uh, do to each layer, do to the, just to like kind of make the effect a little bit different. It's maybe not as like a traditional kaleidoscope would look, but it looks cool in my opinion. So I'll show you that after we're done with this next one. Bottom left, drag that to the top, make sure it's visible, and then dragging that down somewhere like there. Go into the eraser tool. And then this time, instead of going into the main, I'm actually just going to erase into the... Uh, because the bottom right one I erased into the main layer. This time I'm just going to erase into the actual uh, like duplicate layer. Just give it a little bit different of effect. And then again, control shift A, negative one, control shift A, negative two. And then I'm just going to tweak a few things, maybe erase a little bit of that main there. I think I'm going to add that uh, effect, the RGB separation, chromatic aberrations or whatever you call it, to the actual main layer as well. So I think that would kind of just add a little bit to the effect. Click back on RGB. I yeah, I think I like the way that looks a lot. So right there, the effect's pretty much done. Now what I'm going to do is just do a few things that I think can add to the effect and make it look a little bit better. For example, you can make these uh, just a little bit more transparent, each of the kaleidoscope effects. Something like anywhere from like 100 to 80 probably looks good. And you don't have to do the same opacity for each one. Like that one's in like a way brighter area. So I'm going to keep it closer to 90 and same with this one. But these two, I did like 80. And then I think this is like the big, uh, big seller is I go ahead and duplicate each of these layers and then go to screen. And then on the duplicated layer of each one, adding something like Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, whatever you call it. And somewhere around like seven. And then I'm actually going to make that full brightness, so 100% opacity. And then I'm just gonna go through and do that all. So all I'm doing is duplicating the layer, turning the opacity back to 100, putting it on screen, and then adding some blur to it. And then I uh, I didn't really like the way that looked 100%, so I'm actually moving it uh, all the screen layers with the blur to like 50 or something. And it just adds a little bit more blur and like brightness to the image. You can even do that with the main layer if you wanted. And then something like that, you can obviously spend a lot more time tweaking everything. You could uh, go ahead and add a bunch of different like filters like blur you can add radial blur that looks kind of cool depending on let's make sure we're selected like on like a main layer or something some radial blur or something like that you can choose where the center of it is and the amount and i think that adds a cool effect that actually might be a little bit better than adding a gaussian blur you can add some radial blur to each of these you just got to make sure you you know where you're selected like bottom left and then like actually drag it to the bottom of the left here because for some reason it has like the center point so we'll see what that does as a little bit more blur so yeah we, we can go ahead and add that to all of them now that i added radial blur to all these i think i'm going to turn on the opacity of this one of them on the main one at least a little bit and then once you're done with this uh like i said you can add you can spend as much time as you want or add as many effects or whatever to the image as you want but i'm just going to go ahead and save this and export it and then we can affect the uh the image as a whole once it's rendered out wait for that to save and then open that up and then i'm going to add that uh the distortion effect to the overall image once it's rendered out just to kind of do a little bit different then going back i think that really like adds the whole aesthetic you're going for right and then Control j you could even like screen the layer and drag them up. I'm just giving you guys examples of like what you can do to make your uh, your image look different. Like you can see it adds a little bit more of that blur. And then you can even go here and re-add that radial blur, put it in the center. And now I think that's like really where you're, uh, you're getting the effect. I'm going to go ahead and add the distortion onto the layer that I just added the radial blur on. We can go a little bit uh, more intense here, like two and four because the... Uh, the layer is like the opacity is low anyways but yeah guys that's pretty much it for the video if you made it all the way to the end i really appreciate you if you haven't already comment and like uh give me suggestions for next tutorials you can dm me on instagram 
and send a link or you can just tell me a title of a video in the comments below and uh, give me like a timestamp. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead and do that because we got a bunch more videos this month and in the future coming. Go ahead and check out the playlist of Tutorial Miss. It has uh, 11 other tutorials at the moment right now and it's going to be updated every day with until we get to the 31 videos. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video.